Hello, welcome to TNT. Well, it looks like the 300 baht tourist tax, arrival tax, has reared its ugly head again. The Texans been on tour, and there's one foreigner up in Pai, which is up near Chiang Mai, who's had to apologize on his YouTube channel for dissing Thailand. All that and a whole lot more on today's TNT. And starting with this one that's had more comebacks than share. Bangkok Post reporting called to renew levy on tourists. It says tourism operators are urging the new tourism minister to resume the plan to collect a 300 baht fee from tourists because it's not considered an obstacle to arrivals. Well, it's probably not an obstacle to arrivals, uh, given that there's already a departure tax that's been in place for a couple of decades. I just wish they'd make a decision and get on with it. The Vice President of the Tourism Council of Thailand said most stakeholders in the industry, as well as the Thai Chamber of Commerce, agree that initiating this fee collection is important because the tourism development priorities do not have other mechanisms to raise funds. For instance, he said the Tourism Department had 56 tourism-related standards that operators nationwide should apply to ensure quality of service but the budget for regulating tourism is only 10 million baht a year. He says we've got serious problems with safety standards. And the tourism department uh, can set guidelines for each type of tourism service, such as tour buses, restaurants and adventure activities, but it lacks sufficient budget to regulate and audit all operators. Meanwhile, the president of the Association of Thai Travel Agents says the tourism fund should have clear guidelines for usage, differentiated from other fees that have been implemented, as tourists still have not seen development or improvement of tourism sites for years, such as entry fees for national parks. You be the judge. Have you been to a national park lately? Uh, since they started collecting their fees, are the paths any better? Are the toilets cleaner? Is there more infrastructure? But it's not only the 300 baht tourism tax arrival tax that keeps on popping up, and so is this person. Thai PBS World reporting Taxon enjoys bustling walking street in Phuket Monday night. And flanked by his minders and looking fit as a fiddle, Taxon was seen strolling on the busy Bangla Road walking street in Patong Beach on Monday night, accompanied by the Chai Patana party chief. Uh, photos of the visit were published on two popular Facebook pages, Phuket Info Centre and Monsoon Garbage. How appropriate. And his visit to Phuket is also believed to be Per Thai's attempt to boost popularity among voters. And certainly uh, the south of Thailand not really a stronghold for Per Thai. Chiang Mai, uh, tax and old stamping ground, the north of Thailand, the northeast, are more the areas where Per Thai draws most of its political support. Uh, another story that's been updated, and this refers to the murder of a Colombian cosmetic surgeon by a younger Spanish man. An EFE.com reports Spanish murder suspect finishes statement at Thailand trial. And Daniel Sancho, a Spaniard accused of murdering a Colombian surgeon in Thailand, finished his statement yesterday in court where he answered the prosecution's questions. And Sancho finished speaking during the morning session, which began towards 10.30am, lasted more than three hours after he began his statement on Tuesday. He faced both the defence and plaintiff's questions. And Sancho has pleaded not guilty to both the murder and the crime of destroying other people's documentation and has only accepted the charge of hiding the body. The remains were scattered throughout the island of Pangan, including the sea, after the August 2 incident that was last year and his last court session is scheduled for this Friday. And an update on this story from Phuket we reported yesterday, reported this time in the Bangkok Post, British tourist held after Phuket cabbie assaulted. And police have arrested a British tourist accused of assaulting a Phuket taxi driver after a payment dispute. Apparently it happened at 4 a.m. on Saturday. I'm not sure if anybody's gonna be in their best form at 4 a.m. on a Saturday. And the driver demanded a 400 baht fare at the destination, but the tourist gave him only 100 baht, according to the tuk-tuk driver. However, one of the tourists insisted that he had paid 1,000 baht and wanted change. An argument ensued and the tourist attacked the driver by reportedly slapping his face and squeezing his throat. 
Interestingly, a lot of you taking the side of the 31-year-old British man in this incident. Uh, and there's video on yesterday's program that you can see. Uh, although we didn't show the squeezing the throat or the slapping the face because we didn't want to be demonetized. Uh, but, but interesting that uh, so many people have taken the side of the British man saying that all oh, these scams are common and obviously the tuk-tuk driver was in the wrong. But police went to the hotel but the tourist's companion told officers that the man had already left for Krabi province and police obtained a warrant for the man's arrest eventually found him at the hotel on PP Island in Krabi where he was arrested on Tuesday morning. Uh, the 31 year old has been identified only as Graham. He was brought to the Koron police station and then taken to the Phuket court for arraignment and he's been detained there. So at this stage, we don't know if he's going to be charged or having to face some sort of trial. Uh, the best suggestion I could give anybody who has got a dispute over a tuk-tuk or a taxi fare is don't attack the driver. The best thing you can do is to approach the tourist police or get on the phone and call 1155. Uh, in lieu of that, uh, perhaps get one of the local police, but you're probably going to have some language problems. But just don't attack the taxi or tuk-tuk driver, especially if it's captured on video and spread around the world. And that endeth our coverage of some of the uh, stories that needed a bit of an update. And acknowledging our sponsor, Five Star Marine at uh, fivestarmarinephuket.com. You can either go to their website and check out all the beautiful destinations, testimonials from their happy customers, or you can go into the description below this video where there's also a special deal for TNT viewers. Now, the Microsoft CEO has been in town uh, throwing his money around. What's he been doing? Well, Nation Thailand reports the Microsoft CEO vows to help develop Thailand's digital economy. And Microsoft yesterday announced its commitment to build new cloud and artificial intelligence infrastructure in the country. And a new data center region in Thailand will follow growing demand for cloud computing services in the country from enterprises, local businesses and public sector organizations, according to the CEO Satya Nadella. That was during a speech at the Queen Sirikit National Convention Centre and Nadella said the company is also committed to providing AI skills for 2.5 million people in the ASEAN region which is expected to benefit more than 100,000 individuals in Thailand including tourism sector personnel and government IT officials. It looks like we might be starting to see some of the fruits of the labour of the Thai Prime Minister on his jet setting around the world, with at least Microsoft promising to spend some money here in Thailand with a new data centre. All right, to our next story, and we're talking airports. And Nation Thailand says construction of two new Thai airports to start in 2027. Where are they? Feasibility studies for two new international airports, the Andaman Airport in the south and the Lana Airport in the north, should be completed this year. Construction set to start by 2027. The new airports will be capable of handling 40 million passengers, I suppose that's 20 million passengers each. Development of the Andaman International Airport in Panga will cost around 75 billion baht, with potential investment by airlines and private investors. Well, we sort of hope that it's not going to be Bangkok Airways again. We don't want another situation like in Samui, where they've got a monopoly on the Samui Airport, which uh, ends up pushing up fares four to five times what they should be. And this is uh, where this Andaman Airport's going to be. The arrow there pointing at where the current Phuket International Airport is. We've got uh, Krabi there on the right side of uh, the image. And there, the X is where they're going to be putting the Andaman Airport. And that little blue circle there, that's where I am. So I don't think we're going to be in the path of this new airport. Mind you, it looks like it's going to be a few years until I need to worry about it. And construction will take around four and a half years with the airport expected to open in 2032. And the Lana International Airport will be built on 6,500 Rai in the Bantai District, Lampun Province. Apparently most of the plot belongs to private owners. Uh, the construction would start around 2027, but no completion date. And the two airport projects will require a total budget of about 150 billion baht. 
and just checking the location of this uh, other airport the uh, the red mark there is the current Chiang Mai airport and the blue circle is uh, where I think they're going to be building this new Lana International Airport. So it looks like a commitment to some new airports in Thailand and prospects of greater tourism in the future perhaps. Anyway at least we'll be ready. In the meantime while we're up in that part of the world British tourists warned over criticism of Thailand online. And the tourist police in Thailand have warned a British tourist identified as Mr. Thomas against posting videos criticizing the country on social media, citing the potential harm to the nation's image and security. And apparently Mr. Thomas's videos were critical of Thai public and private agencies. He was tracked down at his residence in Pai district, where police urged him to understand the potential consequences of his actions. He was ordered to delete all his videos hosted on YouTube and other social media, and he was told if he continues posting potentially harmful material about Thailand online, he could face prosecution under Thai law. And existing evidence will be forwarded to the Immigration Police for further action. And Mr Thomas ended up posting a bit of a mea culpa video, respecting Thailand, best country ever, I'm so sorry. And he went about recording a, well, a, quite a long video talking about uh, how he believes he was disrespectful and apologising profusely. Although there seemed to be a certain lack of sincerity in the video, but I'll let you make up your own mind. You can check his videos out at Esoteric Entrepreneur. That's Mr Thomas after his visit with the Thai police. And to this lovely story. Recycling Thailand's garbage one second-hand shirt at a time and published in bananews.org. Yeah, what a great idea. And some workers who toil away at a municipal dump in Bangkok have found a novel way of reducing Thailand's waste and helping the environment while pocketing a little extra cash. And Auntie Ton is leading a team of people who scavenge through the piles of trash at the dump in Nongkam district. She said, I used to do odd jobs and collect scrap, but the income wasn't enough to support my children. One day I noticed people leaving good clothes and usable items with the BMA garbage trucks. That's when I had the idea to clean up these items and sell them as second-hand goods, which increased my income and helped reduce waste. Auntie Ton cleans clothes, shoes and other items she salvages and on weekends sells them to stores at a local market. Well, if you do get to see uh, Auntie Ton at one of those local markets, pick up probably a well-priced shirt, previously loved, cleaned, and uh, you're helping Auntie Ton, you're helping the environment, you're helping recycling. So thank you, Auntie Ton, for your work and Banana News for reporting that. And with that, I thank you very much for watching today's program. Hopefully you're a bit more up to date with things happening around the country. One more day of the working week than our weekend programs, the uh, Saturday morning live program and Grumpy Old Men on Sunday. But uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow.